Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. therapist trained professionals of any kind so if you feel you do need help please reach out uh, and get the help you need we have a whole list of things on our files page over on facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast and uh or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or um go to nami.org or um, whatever resource you can find but just please reach out for help if you need it if you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others definitely reach out and try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And um, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. Welcome to The Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Hey, hello. Yo, yo, yo. (laughs) (laughs) And yo, yo, yo to you, too. (laughs) (laughs) So how are you guys? What's been going on? Who wants to go first? Feels like it's been forever. It has felt. It, it does feel like it's been a while. A lot has gone on. The holiday and everything. A lot has gone on. But. I think. I think it kind of has to because, like, I know for myself, I'll just jump in here. Mm-hmm. Like having the days off allow me to do other things mm-hmm. outside of the norm. So what would ordinarily be five days of routine, you, you know, even though it's 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 something different every day. It just feels like five days of work. Well, I didn't have five days of work. You know, I, yeah. I had one less day and I did more things. So it feels like I like I was uh, I was doing more, mm-hmm. you know. And so like for for me, the like, we ended up um, I actually ended up uh, Thanksgiving was pretty lazy for me, which was great. Wednesday night was awesome. I had rehearsal and, and uh, hadn't played music with the guys for a while and and uh, did that. And we can go a little bit later because nobody had to work the next day. Mm. And then I was just just lounging on the couch and, you know, just hanging out on Thursday and playing video games and whatever. And then we went and had we went down to our local recovery hall and we, Sharon and I pulled up. We we showed up about an hour after it started. And it was just nothing but cars on either side of the road for as far as we could see. I could not believe it. Wow. Like I walked in. I was like, I have never seen this many people in here before. <laughs> like it wow. was literally everybody in the valley showed up almost. Wow. <laughs> 
it That's was awesome. It was really awesome. And I, I went up to one guy and I'm like, man, there's not, he's like, we've already gone through six birds. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. In an hour. It was <laughs> unreal. And the Damn. food was great. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that I don't see very often or some people I never you know met before that kind of thing. And, and, uh, just had a real, real nice, just hang out. And then it was like, all right, let's go home, you know, left and, uh, pretty much came home and was just in a food coma, uh, <laughs> which was fine. You know, again, mm-hmm. just more relaxing, nothing big, but Friday was great. Got up and, um, took care of the, uh, we were able to borrow a truck and, uh, get rid of all of the old appliances we had around the house, mm. you know, cause, mm. uh, you know, we had the new ones and, uh, so we, cause we, what we did is we, uh, brought, pulled the old ones out. Actually, no, you know, now that I think about it, we did that on Thursday morning. On Thursday morning, the first thing we did is bring in the new appliances, hooked them up. And that was really cool. And then and on Friday, we got rid of the old ones and a bunch of wood and stuff I had around the house just cause I don't have a way to take anything to the dump. And, uh, and actually had a, it was, even though we we're working, it was kind of fun, mm-hmm. uh, just hanging out. And unfortunately I pulled my ba- uh, muscle on my back, getting the appliances into the house, which really stinks. But so that was the other thing that happened is I had, I was, I've been, I know I kind of talked about it a little bit last week in, in that I was talking about how, like I was reacting to situations and how if I could make it better. And it really got into last week. I felt this this real feeling of not unhappiness, but discontent inside Hmm. like where I don't like how I feel right now. Hmm. And it it was the, I'm pretty much glass half full all the time. Mm -hmm. Even Mm -hmm. if things are, you know, funky, it's like I can, and whatever, whatever I used to, whatever I tie into in myself that gives me that, has felt like it's gone. And it was even, I was talking to my GM about it at lunch a little bit on Wednesday. And he's like, yeah, even your body language. And I'm like, I know, right. (laughs) Like he noticed it. And, and it was funny because I I wasn't, you know, I was like completely agreeing with him. Mm -hmm. And I, and the thing that I was doing is I was being very open about it because otherwise you know, to me, it's 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 part of the process of getting through it and getting out of it was to talk about it with people. So I talked about it with a lot of people and, and you know, just get an option. Oh, yeah, I kind of noticed you seem a little tense. And then it's a, the question is, well, why? Well, I can't I don't have a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I honestly don't have a reason. I just feel this way. And mm-hmm. it's like, OK, well, maybe this is no different than when you're just in a little slum feeling down or, you know, whatever it is, and, and, and you just have to give it time and mm-hmm. get through it. So on, I had to cover Saturday, one of my coworkers was on vacation. I took half a day off last, the last week, Sunday, and then uh, I was going to cover on Saturday. And I got up in the morning and my back, oh, first of all, I overslept because my, I didn't realize my Bluetooth tooth headset was in my pants and my phone had connected to it so it was ringing through the bluetooth oh jeez <laughs> oh, no. the alarm went off so luckily Sharon had gotten up and was like hey aren't you supposed to go to work and it had snowed i mean it was gorgeous saturday morning i mean beautiful we had like 5 6 inches of snow everywhere and i needed to you know i really didn't do a lot of snow removal the day before so i knew i had to get up early and do it and now I'm late and I need to do the, you know, get <laughs> at least the basic snow removal done. And I was just, and I was just in a bad mood. Like yeah. I was just in a bad mood. And then the last thing w- was, was my, um, I couldn't find my wallet. <gasps> and I literally was like, I need to destroy something right now. <laughs> I just, I needed to let it out. And so I picked up this chair, my, my desk chair for one of my computers. And I just, hoisted it to the ceiling and slammed it to the floor <laughs> nice. broke all there's just pieces of wheel everywhere and then i just kicked it across the room into the front door <laughs> and i was like all right now i can go to work <laughs> <laughs> and then i get into the car and there's my backpack and I open my backpack and there's my wallet i'd put it in there i'd just forgotten <laughs> it was probably like the first thing I did this morning, but I was still half asleep. You know, when you're just like, yeah. I, uh, uh, you know, 
<laughs> it was so funny. You know, and then, and then you know, of course, Cher made some comment. I'm like, yep. And she's like, yeah. I was like, when did you take those pictures? She's like, while well, you were destroying things in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell from the timestamp. But, uh, you know, I got, I got done with work on, on Saturday and, um, you know, came home and had, Sharon and I had a really good talk that we needed to have. And, and I just, uh, did my regular work day today and I feel a lot better today. Like I, I didn't have that feeling of like disharmony and that's the only way I can describe it. It's like, I, I told everyone, I feel like I'm fighting the wave instead of flowing with the wave. Yeah. You know, I feel like I'm fighting the snow rather than grooving with the snow, you know, like I'm giving it all these like physical metaphors because it's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. And that kind of went away today. I, I felt a little bit more like I'm back in my flow, uh, which was great. So and uh, yeah, that's about it. Good. Been a, uh, it's been a good week. So Ooh. real quick, how are you enjoying the uh, the new appliances? Love them. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it was pretty cool. You get, like you know, when you guys got the new refrigerator, mm-hmm. it's just like one of those things where you're like, I know what he's what they're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, so it's weird. Just little things. Yeah, it's so weird that you know, with appliances, how when you get a new one, it's like, ee, you know, and it's like, all we're gonna do is put food in this thing. <laughs> you know, like it's. <laughs> but yet it was like 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 so this one's a little bit. It's really it's it's bigger, mm-hmm. but it didn't seem bigger, and I couldn't figure out what what it was. It's taller. Oh, okay. Which I was like, yes, yeah. you know, because I knew it had more cubic uh, feet of space in it. I'd looked at the numbers, but dimensionally, I was like, this actually looks smaller. And the um, the oven's amazing. Just the thing about it is, is like, it's just things today aren't built sturdy. They're they're built lightweight and yeah. they're built functional. And mm-hmm. it just they just don't feel, you know, because they're not they're not super expensive. Because I don't need super expensive, right. but they're probably the equivalent price wise of what I had, but because things are just built differently, it's just, it's just kind of, it's, it's funny how, like I noticed this stuff. And then the other thing was, is we still had my washing machine. We had gotten a washer dryer set. We'd only installed the dryer because that's all we needed. And the other washer was still fine. So I, we got rid of that on Friday and I had the washing machine in the garage, but what I had done, I have a back door to my garage. I had set the washing machine right up by that back door. And I was like, man, and I, I, I knew it was back there, but I couldn't remember if I'd had just done, if I did it just right. And so when I needed to get the washing machine in, uh, uh, yesterday afternoon, I like opened the back door and there it was, it only had one thing on top of it. It wasn't buried, literally just pulled it out, set that in. Nice. Yeah, and that was great. The washing machine is actually really cool. It's my first time I've ever experienced like a real high efficiency washer. Oh yeah. And, uh, but man, everything just makes noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I know our washer and dryer that we got recently does that. It beeps when you turn it on. It beeps when you go through the different options. When it's done, it beeps different times, and then it'll beep again to remind you if you haven't emptied it. You know, and it's it was it's weird like to get sounds. used to. Yeah, I'm. I still remember like the one we had when I was a kid that was like. Meh. When it was done, That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we still have one of those at work because you can still buy them. Like you can yeah. like order through like Costco and stuff. Just mm-hmm. the bare bones turns the dial, and those things yeah, go right, Bang. yep. Basically, yeah. like an egg timer for a dial on the thing, and when it's done, it's yep. Bang. <laughs> mine does because you've uh, you've said it sounded like the end of the quarter. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, exactly. that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it's man. been it 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 is nice and and my mom I had told my mom that I hurt my back and she's like wait wait a minute when I when I get um a new appliances they take the old ones away I'm like mom I got delivery not installation yeah <laughs> yeah that's the difference like, yeah <laughs> yeah and she's like well well I wanted you to have installation I'm like yeah no one's gonna drive an hour and then install. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't they think just, they'd be hip wow. on that. Yeah, not unless they charge you a lot for it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. On one hand, though, it is nice that you know, like you were saying about how the the newer ones are built, they're not as they're generally not as heavy. Like you can no. move them easier, which is nice. You know, yep. mm-hmm. it's one of the things I don't miss about like you know old TVs, Heidelberg couches. 
Um, there was something else I was just thinking of that used to be so much heavier. But anyway, you know, those two are enough. You know, just moving, I don't know how many hide to bed couches I moved, and oh my uh, god, they're oh, so geez. heavy. They're, the, they're, they're so just heavy. the worst. I had one that was a, uh, it was unusual in that it, it was actually an eight foot sofa bed. Oh wow. Sofa couch bed, right? Oh, so wow. it, it had a, when you opened it, it pulled out sideways into like a, a double, I think. Oh, okay. Right. It would mean, it's big, right? Uh, rather than being long, it was short, but it was th- because it's so, you know, it's eight feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, once you have the cushion, it won't stand up in a regular ceiling. Right. You know, the, the arm cushions. Mm-hmm. And when that thing went in, I mean, oh, and I was doing it with like my sister's, this boyfriend that my sister had at the time. And you know, when you start moving something with somebody, like you're lifting, you're moving, you realize this person is a complete klutz because you can feel yourself fighting them the whole way. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. The minute you start to move, you're like, okay, we are not flowing. Like there, there's a battle going on here. <laughs> and it happened all the way in. <sighs> and so when I finally moved out, I took a sawzall to it. I was like, there's no. I don't blame you, man. Those it things was wow. suck. Heavy. I'd never experienced anything like yeah. that before. We've still got one here in this room right outside my room. And it's funny, you know, my mom has mentioned to different people, hey, if you know anyone who needs a couch. And I'm like, I'm not helping them move it. Like, <laughs> like whoever wants it yeah. can come and move it. Like, get some young backs to, to you know, do that, you know. Because my back is too old now for moving height of beds. So, whew, yeah. No thank you. Yep, no no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I know. These kids today, they don't know what it's like to move TVs and stuff like we <laughs> Oh, <laughs> not, yeah. You ain't kidding. Those big old CRT TVs. Oh, they're so awful. Well, even like now, we have, we've got these, uh, we have owners that are finally getting rid of their plasma TV. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know, getting the new technology, and yeah. mm-hmm. you know, they they, and there's a couple of these big plasmas that I've pulled out. They're heavier than an old CRT. Like really? I could not believe how wow. heavy this one plasma was. Really? <laughs> was. It was like a 60 inch plasma television, wow. and I could barely lift it. Oh, wow. Because wow. I was going to say, a 60-inch TV, you should still be able to get yourself. So, wow. That's saying it, something. It had a frame on the back of it, you know, the, for the wall mount. Mm-hmm. And both hands, and I and I, it was oh. like doing um, a deadlift. And once I got it up to my waist, I was like, okay, that's – and I'm literally just shuffling, shuffling yeah. along to the car. Wow. Like just shuffling along because wow. it was just so heavy. And, uh, and, and when I got it to my house, I'm like, oh. I don't want to do this again. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Why did I do this? Nope. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was shocked. I was like, I had no idea. This was that heavy. Yeah. Cause uh, uh, that's why I said, you know, I, you know, I have helped move a uh, 60 inch TV before. And I, I honestly, at one point I was just like, just get out of the way. I can get this. You know, yeah. the only reason that it's hard to do yourself is it's awkward. You know, it can be weird yeah. to kind of turn with it where two people can do it just easier, you know, but yeah. yeah. Oh man. Can you imagine trying to move a 50 inch TV back in the day or a 60 inch? Oh my God. You'd need like a Ooh. whole crew. <laughs> yeah. You'd probably have to get a refrigerator mover and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you, you know, everything with those went fairly smoothly then and. That yeah, you're enjoying not them. Too bad. Yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Um, How about you, Brian? How was your week? Uh, I've still been really fighting my depression. I'm actually thinking that I might make a doctor's appointment and go in and talk to him about, you know, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to go up on my medicine, but I don't know what else to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And because I don't want to go up on it because, again, that with that Wellbutrin before when I did that, I was shaky. So I don't know. Maybe there's another option or something. But um, because I, I'm just having the hardest time getting out of bed. Mm. I mean, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm not kidding. I'm not getting out of bed till about 6 o'clock every day. Oh. I just can't. And even today was a real struggle to get out of bed. I mean, I just... I, I laid there for 
probably almost an hour just trying to psych myself into getting out of bed and I just could not do it. And I, there's no real reason aside from just the season, I guess, but it's not, you know, other than that, like nothing has gone like terribly wrong in life or anything like that. That's really, you know, put me in a slump of any kind. It's, um, it's like you were saying, Hanno, it's just like, I just feel it, but I, there's not really a catalyst that I know of, you know, or that Mm -hmm. I can think of. So yeah, I don't know. It's been tough, but I've, I've still, like I was saying before, I try to, once I'm out of bed, you know, like today, you know, I, I got up finally and I took a shower and we're doing this and I'm pretty much going to consider that a win for the day. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. it's, uh, it's, it's tough. So yeah. Uh, again, I want to, you know, mention to anybody out there, if, if you're kind of going through the same thing, you know, don't, don't rule out talking to your psychiatrist if you have one or, or your general practitioner about, um, you know, maybe, maybe you need an adjustment on your meds to get you through the winter or something like that. Um, so yeah, other than that, it was, you know, Thanksgiving was whatever. And, you know, I didn't end up going, which I talked about last week. It's the only reason really I'm bringing it up is I didn't end up going because my mom wasn't feeling good. So we just stayed home and, you know, we had already had the whole Thanksgiving dinner like three times the week before that. So I was good. (laughs) I didn't miss anything. Plus in fairness, I can make anything that I want. So, you know, if there was something I really had a hankering for, I could, you know, I can take care of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but whatever, you know, it's whatever. Um, I gave myself another shot this week of my testosterone and could not have gone better. Oh, Mm -hmm. good. Like seriously, from start to finish, it took me, I don't know, three minutes. You're just a pro now. Yeah, I was nice. like, and I actually figured out, um, I think I know why it was hurting before. Um, when I was looking at the diagram of, of how far you put the needle in, there's three levels of your skin. Like there's the skin, then there's the fat, and then there's the muscle. And I was only getting into the fat. And apparently you want to get all the way to the muscle. Um, mm. not into the fat. Makes when sense. you get into the fat, it can hurt. So when you go all the way to the, so I put it in a little further this time and, and did it. And yeah, I did that on Thursday and today's Sunday. And I, I feel it a little tiny bit. Like if I rub my hand over it, I can, it, it doesn't hurt, but I can tell something's different, but that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. No real pain this time. So that's that made awesome. me really happy also. Yeah. That oh, not only oh, did absolutely. I do it, yeah, not only did, was I able to boom and just be done with it, but I also maybe solved, you know, cause it, it was painful enough that it felt like I had a Charlie horse right above my knee. That's how Ooh, it, you know, dude, that's not good. no, and you're that's walking so around and I'm massaging it, trying to, and it just, nothing yeah, really yeah, helps yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, so I'm glad, you know, that, that definitely was, you know, uh, perked the right mm-hmm. way. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I haven't really done a whole lot else. Oh, I did go out um on Thanksgiving Day. My brother wanted to go over to Target and you know, and I for some reason said yes. And mm-hmm. um we got in there and I, it wasn't that bad though because they they pushed the line instead of like down the middle of the store. Mm-hmm. Um they actually made the line kind of curve around to the edge of the store. That way people could still navigate the aisles and everything without having a ton of people in the way. Um, which I thought was really smart because I've been in there before and it was just all the way down the center aisle of the store and it was hard to get around it. Um, because, you know, they also had products out there. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, there were, there were a lot of people though, but I'm so glad I wasn't going to buy anything because there's no way I'm waiting in that line. Just <laughs> not going to happen. That's one of those where it's like you just go to somebody at the front line and be like, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks if I can just put this TV in your car. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> mm. 
Good but times. Actually, it wasn't. It really wasn't bad. You know, I expected there to be a lot of people kind of everywhere, mm-hmm. and, and and it wasn't. There were a lot of people, but because of how they moved that line, it 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 looked more spread out. So it was, you know, that was fine. That's good. And we went over to GameStop, and it was basically the same thing. The manager there is a smart dude. Had all his um, longtime workers working that night. So they were just firing people through the line like nothing because, you know, they're all, they all are very knowledgeable. They all know, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then he was out on the floor answering questions and stuff. It was, it, it was really good management is what it was. You know, they had one new guy working there and that was it. The, all the, was it the other five people I think that were working were all people I've seen in there for the last few years. So that's just smart. smart. Yeah. That's, that's real smart. So that made things a lot easier for, um, you know, people really didn't have to wait long in line there. So that was, I'm sure that made them happy. Um, yeah, I think that's it though. That's yeah. All right. Cool. Well, um, my week, it was started out a little rough because, uh, uh, we were still finishing up the floors in my back room and getting that final, you know, everything done, the trim molding and everything put up and all the finishing aspects of all that. And then I had to work. So I worked um, Monday, had Tuesday off, then worked Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So I got home Thursday morning um, at four in the morning. I got home and my husband had the night before set up all the tables and everything mm. and got everything all set for Thanksgiving. So all I had to do was decorate. I'd have to put out all the dishes and, de- you know, put the tablecloth down, do any decorating that I want to do and set up. So I did that. And so I ended up finally crawling into bed around like 630-ish. Slept for a few hours, uh, so I got about three hours of sleep. Then I was up again, getting ready, and then making sure the food and all the little stuff that needed to get done got finished and all that jazz. So it was kind of a crazy, hectic day. But as soon as people started showing up, everything just kind of just flowed. It just went real smooth, and uh, the, everyone loved the back rooms. The, that we had finished. Uh, the TV was going in the back room with the football game on, lots of TV in the front room for the cartoons. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was one of those things that it just, the space worked out really well. Uh, we had plenty of food. Both turkeys turned out amazingly well. So it was just, I could not have asked for a better first Thanksgiving in my house. So I'm very, very just thankful. Everything went well. I, you know, everyone was gone by around seven thirty, eight o'clock. I would say at the latest, mm-hmm. everyone was gone, and by the time they had gone, most of everything had been cleaned up. Nice. So yeah, so Friday nice. I just had I ended up hurting my back by doing way too many dishes, standing in front of the sink, hunched <laughs> over the sink doing dishes. Yeah. So I ended up hurting my back on Thursday, but so I was a little pain on Friday. But Friday I was able to finish everything up. And, uh, and get everything taken care of. And then, well, something that I skipped over, because I worked Monday night for you know, someone who was on vacation. I worked Wednesday night because that's my normal night. Then production got canceled on Friday and Saturday. So I have off from Thursday through the last, through next Wednesday. So that's like six days in a row <laughs> of no work. So. It's just been really interesting, kind of what you kind of uh, talked about, Hannah, which is I've just, it's just been, I've been almost like I'm feeling busier because I'm filling my days with all these different things that I'm doing, but it's just, I don't know, it's just different. It's just filling up my week very differently. So I've just been, you know, getting the house in order and then working in the pole barn, getting the pole barn in order. And already there's talks about thing of Christmas Eve. So we get to do this whole thing again in mm-hmm. about four weeks. Yay. Mm-hmm. So um <laughs> as far as the anxiety and all that stuff is concerned, it's pretty rough. The la- you know, Monday, Tuesday, I'm not gonna lie, it was rough. Uh especially Tuesday and Wednesday, 
especially I, I was really, really, really stressed out. And I, a lot of it I did to myself and I can recognize that mm-hmm. and it's habits and behaviors that I need to work on. So in hindsight, I can definitely see where I need to stop myself from stressing like I do. And, you know, I need to focus on my mantras, my, you know, um, gr- my gratitude lists. I need to like use those tools that are in my toolbox that I put there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, I set this things, set things up the way I set them up for a reason, you know? And so at least this time <laughs> you, you having those days off afterward, you know, mm-hmm. you, you can <clears throat> kind of recharge, you know, exactly. You're not going boom yeah. right back to work and, you know, so at least there's that. Yeah, and then there's there's talks that we may have some time off around thing, around Christmas too. Mm. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Mm. Um, so you know, it, it is it's it's good. Yeah, everything is is really good right now. I'm feeling really 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 good. Um, like I said, the stress is completely gone for the moment. Um, yeah, I had a a phone interview. So, which was very, very positive and always a good feeling. So we'll see if that leads into something else and maybe that will get me back on days and, uh, and relieve some of the other additional stress that work is causing, Mm. but maybe I'll be trained, you know, trading one hand from another, you know, one troubles for one for another set of troubles. I don't know. Mm. It's tough to say when you do things like that, but, we will find out. But that's that's pretty much what I'm week. Oh, and the one thing, um, my dogs, I ended up putting my dogs up when I had guests over on Thanksgiving. And so I put them in, we have a little playhouse on our property that's just out our back door. So it's, you know, I don't know, it's about the size of a, of a den or an office, you know, a medium sized room type of a thing where it is a loft, which obviously the dogs don't go up into the loft, but it's about a medium sized room. We had a little heater out there for them and let them kind of run and run loose in, in this room. And so every time you would walk past the playhouse, you would think that we were torturing them. (laughs) According to them, we were evil and all this bad stuff was happening and they were being injured and, (laughs) oh my goodness. And there's two little windows in this thing. And both dogs, (laughs) one would be in each window. So we'd be inside having our Thanksgiving dinner and stuff. And you look outside and you just see these dog faces in the window just gazing at you. (laughs) I wish I could be in there too. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Oh, you want to talk about guilt? (laughs) And they laid it on so thick that we had. They know who the mark is. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Well, they were laying it on so thick that after everyone was done eating and stuff, we were cleaning the plates. We collected scraps and different things. And so we were heading out to give some scraps to the dogs. And my mother-in-law looked at the plate and she's like, you guys aren't going to give all that to the dogs, are you? You're going to make them up, their stomachs upset. You're going to make them sick. I'm like, and Dan, my husband said, you know, no, we'll just give them a little bit. And, you know, we'll go out and see them. We're not going to give it all to them. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. So we get out there. Oh, they so got the whole plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they completely awesome. got the entire plate of scraps and stuff left over. <laughs> and they probably got even more later that night, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they, yes, they're, they're very spoiled puppies. And, uh, Funny. yeah, mm-hmm. it was, it was pretty entertaining, but, <laughs> but they made it through Thanksgiving too, well, which good. is always good. Everybody made it through. And now, like you said, we just have to look forward to Christmas, Christmas Eve. That's our next big family get together. So, mm. which is always a good time because I have a family 
obligation party going during the afternoon. So I'm going to be gone all afternoon on Christmas Eve, and then I'm still having people over Christmas Eve evening for a full dinner. So, hmm. yay me! <laughs> <laughs> So you guys get to hear about all my stresses and all my working myself up. Maybe it won't be as bad the second time around. Mm. Maybe I'll learn something from this time. Nope. Maybe I won't. Nope. <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, if we have the same conversation tonight, then, you know, as tonight, then then we'll call you on it. Yeah. Yes. Call me on it. Mm. Remember when you said... <laughs> <laughs> I just have the sound clip ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember it. this <laughs> here let's let's uh let's go back to we're gonna go back a month and let's hear yeah. what uh, jen had, had to say then <laughs> right mm. i That's need to funny. use my tools so i need to keep them mm. in the forefront for the next few weeks for sure mm -hmm. and forever always but um yes for definitely for the next few weeks for sure to keep those tools sharp and really focus hard on not getting stressed and anxiety overridden and all that good jazz. Mm -hmm. but, so tonight's episode, or I should say tonight's article, mm -hmm. I can talk, is the difference between love, lust, and attachment, why we have it all wrong. I'm ready to hear about this. Right? <laughs> Well, it starts with a, with a quote. Try not to confuse attachment with love. Attachment is about fear and dependency. It has more to do with love of self than love of another. Okay. Okay. The feelings we get when we meet someone new are hard to understand at times. We have a biopsychosocial -psych and even spiritual responses and interactions with people when we come into contact. We've all met someone and felt like we just wanted to be around them. They make us nervous. We can't think straight. We're self-conscious. We feel overwhelming, pull towards them. I have, like many before me, spent my life equating this experience with the very beginning stages of love, hmm. or may even go as far as to proclaim this as love at first sight. All right. Well, I did this because, one, it didn't happen often. Two, I felt like any and all ambivalence disappeared from my mind and emotion. Three, I felt extremely attracted to them. But what if I said this isn't remotely real romantic love at all? What if I said this isn't lust either? What if I said books like Romeo and Juliet, The Notebook, Twilight, and many others alike have gotten love completely and utterly wrong all along? So, our subconscious minds have been programmed to want that kind of big love. That kind of dedication, that kind of commitment, that kind that would play out like, you know, the movies. So I had this revelation recently after meeting someone and being overtaken by these emotions for the first time in a while. I immediately went to the idea that maybe she is the one. Maybe this is the it. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't focus. I just wanted to be with her. I just wanted to be close to her. Then I realized something quickly. While in the throes of my ser serendipitous fairy tale encounter this was out of character for me at this point in my life i felt i couldn't be myself like i was out of control my confidence was muddy by my nerves i felt like i had no say in what was happening between us and what was happening inside me something else took over i knew it wasn't purely lust and i knew intuitively it was what love should feel like so it wasn't what love should feel like so what was it so after years of growth and work, I knew one thing for sure. Balance is the secret to life. So feeling incredibly unbalanced was a red flag to me. I dug deeper. I thought back to my training as a counselor, the presentations I had given on attachment theory, and the digging I had done on my own attachment schemas. As I realized when I quieted all of those seemingly out of control but elated feelings, the emotion came to forefront was anxiety pure anxiety i thought back to every relationship or encounter that made me feel that way and in an effort to get to the bottom of this i desperately asked my higher self what they had in common and it was clear right away they 
all ran away at some point. But to be more accurate, they were all emotionally and psychologically ambivalent. Ambivalent. <laughs> I can't say that word. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> Or wave-like in their attachment orientation. This meaning, in the context of ambivalence, they went back and forth between being emotionally available and unavailable, sure of what they want, and then unsure and pull away. Attachment theory is far too in-depth to dive into into this article, but in short, we all develop attachment patterns stemming from childhood relationships with our caregivers, and they are ever evolving through our teenage and adult years as we go head first through relationships and friendship, through friendships and romantic relationships. So it's interesting because he talks about how all of this, how the connection between two people can be attachment but not love and it's really fascinating kind of how he's taken the that obsession almost of the movies and really blown that out of the water I don't know what do you guys think I think he's spot on on with Things just from my own experience and also from uh, things that I see with some friends of mine, too. You know, it really it it the, I loved where he talked about that, that idea of it being self-seeking, mm -hmm. you know, that because it it's less about that, you know, having that infatuation with somebody that. To me, it, it, I never thought about it in the terms of that it was actually something. It, well, I, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. I just never really equated it this way. Is so for me, uh, alcoholism had to do with filling a hole, mm -hmm. you know, feel well, kind of like how I opened up. Like it's un, it's weird for me to feel discontent, but discontent was the norm. Yeah. You know, as an active al alcoholic and because I'm constantly trying to fill this hole inside of me with something and it took various forms. It took drugs. It took alcohol. It took women. It took, you know, um, achievements. It took, you know, whatever it took because it, it had to, it had to do with a lack of self-esteem, a lack of comfort, a lack of um, just being comfortable in my own skin. So I looked for outside things to solve that. And one of them was there was nothing better than a good, you know, infatuation or a lust or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I know he's going into these various categories, but the ultimately what it was is I never realized from the standpoint, it was very selfish. It had nothing to do with how I felt about somebody else. It had to do with how this feeling helped me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It didn't even matter who it was. All that mattered was there's this reaction and the reaction has nothing to do with the other person it has everything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that was just so dead on because that was something that this is the difference with my relationship with Sharon and everybody else that I've ever been with is my relationship with Sharon started out of something between the two of us, something mm -hmm. It wasn't just something we had in common, like uh, we both like the color blue mm. or we both hate arugula. It had to do with a desire to find a way of living, uh, of, of, of a partnership, of something that was in our core that we could both experience together. And I've never started a relationship with that. And that was the difference. And that's what I think he's kind of talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that is that it's not something does it, that, that grabs you. It's not something in the movies that that like love at first sight. No, it's literally an agreement. The true love between the two of us is an agreement. I mean, yes, there was also all those other factors. You know, there was attraction and 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 the, um, you know, the lust and infatuation and, and all those other things that make that draw you to somebody mm -hmm. yeah but the real relationship came out of an it, it literally came out of a, a conversation that led to a question and the answer was us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so I, t- I totally get it. I just, yeah. I just love that idea though of like that, that when somebody comes to me in the future and says, this person does all these, is, is all these things to me. And it's like, well, maybe it's just you. <laughs> it has nothing right. to do with or him, whatever. Yeah. I know well, what you mean though. Cause I did the same thing with, um, like depression. Like I, I, you know, become attached or infatuated with, with somebody essentially. And during mm-hmm. that time I didn't, you know, I didn't feel as depressed because yeah. it was, you know, cause in your head you're making up all this stuff that, you know, fills those voids, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, until something breaks that, you know, infatuation or, or however you want attachment, however you want to word it, you know, lust, whatever it is. Um, you know, and then it's right back to where you were before. <laughs> it's much yeah, like you, you were know, saying you know what, about alcohol. You know, it's the same concept. Yeah, you know what? You know what breaks it? The 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 first time that that you actually find out what that other person wants. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. when I look back on it, it was all in my head. Yeah, I made mm-hmm. up the whole thing. Yep. Any any sort of little fantasy trip that I was on, any sort of future casting I was doing. It was all in my head. It was, it was never as a result of a conversation with the other person. And then when you finally do have the conversation with the other person, the other person says, I don't want that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you've already, yeah. you've already had it in your head. Yeah. Boom. It just blows. Right. It blows up. And, and what are you left with? You again. And a trapper keeper full of their last it. name. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. unhappy you. <laughs> yeah. You know. Because that's that's who you were. That's who you were going in. That's why yeah. this whole thing about when people bounce from one relationship to another to another and they never quote unquote find themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, they can do that for the rest of their lives and be perfectly happy. Yeah. However, there's that opportunity to actually become comfortable with oneself and, and then find a relationship. Yeah. It's really fascinating because when you stop and you take that scenario and you apply it to the interwebs and social media twitter crushes Uh you know that's a huge thing tc's twitter crushes you see it go time and time again people go through the same motions with the same you know the same type of people they find somebody they talk together every day for hours on end just Chit chatting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and all of a sudden something happens and done. Yeah. So then they find somebody else, and it's the same roller coaster. Just well, same ride. And part of that is because uh, this isn't everyone, of course, but no, um, of course, I a lot of the ones that I've seen that that go through that again and again are people who have low self esteem. You know, yeah. which makes sense. Like Henna was saying, his stuff was rooted in low self-esteem. Mine was rooted in low self-esteem. You know, this is a very common thread, you know, through this whole kind of thing. Because you're really, you're essentially looking for anything that makes you feel better, you know. Yeah. Validates you. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't have to be low self-esteem, like self-worth either. It could just yeah. be fear. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it could take all these different forms. You know, mm-hmm. I guess this, mm-hmm. I guess this was my point. Yeah, is that just like the fear of being alone for the rest of your life, the fear of an expectation mm-hmm. of maybe a parent yeah. or or maybe looking at your siblings or your friends or something like that, and you feel like you almost got your own a, a different version of FOMO. You know? Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. Out, mm-hmm. You know, and all those things, and none of those. And so then you react based on that self-centeredness because that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. centering on self, yeah. mm-hmm. and and you're like I always love this the the breakdown of the word disease into disease, and and you're you're in a state of disease and you want to fix it. Yeah. And this is what I did all the time. Yeah. I fixed it. Mm-hmm. But it was always. It's temporary. Like, the, like he talks about, it. it's like, oh, the interest, interest, no interest. You know, they pull back. They're, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the problem is I made it so much worse because I was not in a sense of balance. I mm-hmm. was not in, I was never in a sense of coming at things from a, um, an even starting point. No, you were yo-yoing. I was yo-yoing. always skewed. Yeah. 
You know, you're you're I'm literally going in with the swing at the farthest end of the pendulum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder why it always swings back so quickly <laughs> to the other side. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yep. Totally. Yeah. Well, he goes on the article, and you're going to love this. The next portion of the article is from victim of love to empowered co-creator of love. Ah, there we go. <laughs> he writes. I jumped ahead again. Don't. You did. I realize that real true love is a choice. It isn't something that happens to us or triggers us. At the heart of empowerment is, a, in fact, a choice. When we choose to have romantic relationships with the people that balance us. We are in control and empowered enough to choose and co-create with that person what that relationship will ultimately be. We can alchemize and create relationship dynamics such as passion, dedication, and unconditional love. All the fairy tale cues we yearn for, all accomplished by setting the intention to have that type of relationship and backing it up with actions that align those intentions. But it must start from a space of feeling balanced in our love, interest, energy, and presence. In this moment of clarity, I was able to realize literature and society had it all wrong. I had it all wrong. Big romantic love isn't this overpowering, energetic force that takes us over and sweeps us off our feet. It is something we intentionally choose to co-create from a balanced place with a partner who draws feelings of peace from within us, not anxiety or fear, in a partner we can trust. But we can be our most authentic self with. Mm. There you go. You know, really quick, mm -hmm. something I think was interesting is when he says that TV and literature got it wrong. And I'm kind of like, well, no, because they're making stuff up. So you can't tell a creative mm -hmm. person their vision is wrong, really. But um, it's more in how you interpret it. But I understand if it's constantly, you know... A, presented one way people tend to expect that but um yeah. uh you know like i've never been that kind of person when it comes to this type of thing you know i never yeah. thought at any point i was going to be running down the beach you know toward someone or riding on a horse you know to mm -hmm. them it's you know like i've those things have not gone through my head so mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know this is a little of where you gotta take that step back and you know um, that, that's where you take your responsibility in it because you've allowed that to be created in your own head. Um, but it's easy enough to do it cause you're already distorting your thinking with this to begin with, you know, Yeah. but he's right. Yeah. That's that when it comes to the rest of it, like Heno, you said that you went into the relationship with Sharon because of a, a conversation you both had which led to you know it's like the, it wasn't like you were like hey use my woman and she was like cool you know it was <laughs> you know or you didn't like hit her over the head with a club or something yeah not like that no no not usually oh so <laughs> it'd be so much better to just you know do the old club and over yeah. the head and use my woman right <laughs> come to my cave so that is very important is to you know, and even if you feel like you had this connection with somebody, because I think we've all done this where we've talked with somebody and you're like, I've just never like there's something that, you know, like you feel a spark for lack of a better term, you know, yeah. even if it's not a romantic situation, but you just there's something there, you know, and it's like, well, if at that point you approach the person and kind of find out their feelings, fine. But if all you do from that point is sit back and daydream and, like I said earlier, you know, yeah. scribble their name on your trapper keeper or whatever, you know, yeah. it's – that's not – that's where it's not healthy because you're not – you're not actually in a relationship, no, you know? You're, you're not. That's the, yeah. And that's yeah. my whole thing. I realized I was not in a relationship. Yeah. I was in my own head. Yeah. And I was creating the narrative than rather, rather than asking the questions and allow – you know, it's – and yeah. and – you, we have to have those little sparks mm -hmm. to get you in. Yeah. Like that. And I don't think that's what this article is saying at all that, but the truth yeah. is, is the long, the longevity, the real relationship is exactly what he says. I believe it now. Mm -hmm. Now, theoretically, I always, I always thought that way, but there's, um, it's amazing how emotions can distort us to the point of, and 
we've all been through it. We're, we're, we, we had a relationship where everybody around us was saying this, do, don't do this, you, mm-hmm. you know, and they're like, I don't know what you, but, but you're totally into it. Yeah. And that's because emotions are powerful. Mm-hmm. It's, it's what, a, it's, you know, it's part of us being human. Yeah. You know, but there is a place, there is a point where we, we do, you know, we've, we talk about on the show all the time, these character defects can be our assets. They don't have to be liabilities. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, logic is not something to be avoided. It's also there for a reason too. We have a logical mind as much as we have an imagination. And we talked about it. We've, we've talked about it with other, you know, well, I brought it up with that airplane episode, you know, Mm -hmm. about, you know, our imagination is there to get us away from a bear, Mm -hmm. but it can also get us into a lot of trouble, even in relationships. Mm -hmm. But if you put your mind to use, and that's why, that's why these ideas of like red flags, you know, it's, these are, these are there for a reason. Yeah. Is you sit so that a year later you're like, oh, well, why did I, you know, decide to get married to someone who loves the football team I absolutely hate? You know? <laughs> right. I'm going, I'm going light rather yeah. than to write to like religion and stuff. Yeah, right. However, you know, like one of my coworkers, he has children now, and he's realizing that he and his wife have different parenting skills. I think there's a lot of people that f- have found that out, you know, because you and may I talk about it. I go, yeah, but it's like you can talk about we're having children conversation. Well, I mean, yeah, but but I can also see how it's like you could talk about parenting styles, but there's obviously you can't talk about all the nuanced stuff that's going to pop up, you know, so and some of that stuff can turn into big stuff, you know, um, like discipline. Yes. Yeah. yeah, one believes in spanking, big. the other doesn't. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's it's like, it's like one, yeah. 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 To me, to me, that's kind of on that list of things. Like, it's like, okay, I want to get married so I can have children. What was your What was your discipline process like in your family? Yeah. How mm-hmm. were you disciplined as a child? Right. Would you do the same things to your children? Yeah. You know, and I sit there and I go, I get it. We don't have these conversations because we're really not thinking that far ahead but to me i sit there and i go yeah, there's a reason i don't have children <laughs> yeah. amen yeah. yeah you know and and it's probably because i would have forgotten that same question <laughs> <laughs> right <clears throat> yeah so how do you make the shift to create a healthier romantic relationships one uh is remember awareness is the first step It won't stop you from feeling those intense emotions when you are around someone who triggers your attachment schemas, but it will empower you to make healthier choices about what role these people do or don't play in your life. We have been conditioned on multiple levels to seek overwhelming love. It isn't a habit we can break overnight. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about that the other day. I was having a conversation with somebody online because they made – they were talking about, you know, people in their wedding vows and how, you know – um like how can you promise someone forever kind of a thing. And I was like, you know, I was like, I, I, I kind of feel that is never been, it's never been an accurate goal. You know, it's like, if you get there, cool. But it's like the, the thing is just like along our path for however long this goes, these are the things I'm going to promise you essentially. But, um, you know, when you get to, um, like just looking for that grand ending, like Hanno was saying, it's like, you know, you, um, you know, a lot of people are, I'm going to grow up, go to college, get married, have kids, you know, like just those kind of things. And I think in that kind of thinking, the big concept of true love is very important to them, you know, because it's part of the process. It's on the plan, you know, and then you've got other people who are just kind of like, eh, if it happens, it happens, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's interesting to me how some people are so rigid about it, but I think that rigidity makes people, like, I think it makes you want it so, to where you're, mo- I feel like you're more likely to do this, you know, because you're trying mm-hmm. so hard to hit that for whatever reason, whether it's your expectation or family expectation or, you know, whatever, I just kind of feel like people, by putting so much importance on it, it's like for a long time, women would, 
you know, talk about how, you know, if, or, or people would talk about how if a woman wasn't married by like 35 or whatever, 40, she was, you know, going to become a cat lady, you know, and I think people get afraid of that. So they do whatever they can to like, they're trying to make something out of something. It isn't, you know, to, Mm. to fit some of these windows. Well, the next one is continue to become more aware and heal your wounds any way you can. Rewrite the stories you've told yourself about what love is and what love is not that have held you back from having the type of relationship you really want. It takes time to reprogram the narrative and build real love from a balanced place with more self-sabotage. Uh, the next one is balanced romantic relationships can start in a multitude of ways, but friendships seem to be the most natural balanced place to start. This doesn't mean force friends first in an inorganic way. It just means listen and pay attention to how you feel when you're with that person. Uh-huh. And I've heard that uh, quite um, a few times from, from people, you know, about how, you know, like, oh, I, you know, I want to be friends with somebody before we go out or whatever, you know, and it's, it's interesting because uh, I think both, both genders, you know, kind of do this. It's like when you, 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 you dance a fine line there because a lot of us, when you start seeing someone as a friend, you stop seeing them as a romantic possibility, you know, Mm -hmm. whereas I think the other way, if you see them as a, for lack of a better term, a subject of your lust, you can still become friends with them down the road and and it's a little differently. So it like I said, you kind of tap dancing on a real fine line there. Um, but I understand what he's he's getting at is it's a more careful approach and it's a more mindful yes. approach. Yeah. Next one is notice when you feel inner peace, joy, authenticity, vulnerability, and acceptance when in the presence of someone. These are sentiments, sentiments and emotions felt when rooted in balance. Anxiety, a.k.a. butterflies, fear, please don't leave me, are an anxious need to be with someone and feeling like you need to be with something or someone you aren't. Need to be something or someone you aren't. Those are the biggest indicators that you're not coming from a balanced place. So I get it. And I, I like what he's saying. I mean, part of my wedding vows to my husband was I choose you Mm -hmm. and, and I, I will choose you every morning for the rest of our lives together. Mm. And it was a big one on an emphasis on that word choose. That's how I've always felt. And it is a choice. Mm -hmm. And you wake up and you, whether you choose to com- to honor the commitments that you've made to this other person or not, doesn't mean you're wrong if you don't. It just means that, you know, you're choosing something else. But it is a very mindful approach. And it's easy to get lost in flights of fancy. And I've actually posted on... On, on Twitter before that I'm lost in my what ifs, mm-hmm. you know, I get lost in the what ifs yep. or I'm having a five moment, <laughs> which, you know, and it's, it, you get stuck sometimes in your own head and you're like, Oh, well, what if this would have happened? Or what if this happens? Or what if that happens? And pretty soon you're so far down the rabbit hole that you've created this whole fantasy world. Mm-hmm. You know, based upon what this, and nothing that's rooted, and so it's it's one of those things that it's not bad, and it's great to fantasize, and it's great to have those what ifs, and it's great to have those moments, as long as you recognize what they are, mm-hmm. which are these wonderful fan- flights of fancy that um, that you can have fun with. But know that the reality, when reality comes calling, that you recognize what real is yeah. and what you decide to choose. Yeah, because moderation with what ifs is, you know, like most things. Oh, yes. Because, you know, as <clears throat> as I'm contractually obligated to point out, what if thinking is on the distorted thinking worksheet. Um, 
because it's too easy to get caught up in future casting. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and really the goal for mindfulness is to not be in the future or the past. It's to be right where you are. And Mm -hmm. that's, you know, um, and for some people, I think you've got to recognize whether you're the type that can just do a quick what if, or if you're the type that's going to sit there and obsess on what ifs, you know, um, I'm, sure. I'm an obsessor when it comes to that kind of thing. So it's not good for me to really play in that pool, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but for others, they can, you know, uh, and like I said, like you said, you know, it's, you know, you could sit around and talk about, Oh, what if this team had won this, what would have happened and blah, blah, blah. Or what if this boxer beat this boxer, you know, you can do those kind of things and be fine, but you just have to be careful, especially in this scenario, because you're, you're attaching your feelings to it as well a lot of times, you know, um, mm-hmm. especially if you have a, you know, an attraction to someone else and you're, you know, f- you know, dr- daydreaming about all the stuff, you know, you're, you're putting your, your own emotions on the line there a little bit. And, you know, especially if, you know, you, you haven't found out if they feel the same way or not, it is really putting the cart before the horse, you know. It can be a very dangerous game. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, one of the the kind of interesting changes in my life lately has been the ability to have those types of fun conversations with people and, you know, to be in a relationship where I can you know, experience that type of, you know, infatuation and things like that and just let it be what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the difference and where before I used to get really obsessed or, you know, like that desire to wanting to keep like to keep it going, to keep it going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that, and that's really, is, and we're not, now it's like, it's okay. I don't have to. And I think that, that's a reflection of me and where I am at. Uh, you, you know, with self confidence and also just with just being um, a little more. I don't know how to how to say it. It's like I don't feel restrained by the rules, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I find mm-hmm. more enjoyment in having them. I find more freedom in having them. It's a strange paradox. I've talked about a lot. Uh, you know, like one of them making, you know, making the decision that, all right, I'm not going to have children and getting a vasectomy. That was liberating to me. Mm-hmm. Getting married was liberating to me. It was the opposite of what I was, af- was afraid it would be. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that those things would, 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 would be the, would give me the opposite effect. I feel restricted mm-hmm. because those were my experiences in the past, but those were self, those were self-centered restrictions. Those are self-imposed restrictions. And so now I find that I'm able to enjoy those types of moments and I think they're very human and they're, they're, it's a way that I choose to live. Other people wouldn't, but I do. And I enjoy it a lot because I can take it or leave it. I don't, I, you know, I don't need it. And it's also very, like I said, it's really nice to be honest and to be honest about who I am. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the one thing that I was missing in, in, in early dating and things like that. I wanted to be every, everything to everybody. Yeah. And, and you're not alone mm-hmm. in that. I mean, how many people do we know where they're, you know, I mean, there's a reason that it's a, a trope on TV where a guy exactly. meets a girl and he's trying to convince her that he's something he's not basically because he's afraid when she finds out who he is that she won't like him anymore, you know? And I've seen plenty of people do that in real life where they'll play something up and I'm like, what's your end game here? Like eventually they're going to find out that you're lying, you know, just be honest. If the person likes you, then awesome. If they don't, yeah, probably not meant to be together then. (laughs) And and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard thing about it is to, is to learn to become okay with that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I, and I really think it's a, it's again, it's one of those things where you have to, you have to practice it. You have to try it you have to give it for uh you have to take it out for a test run yeah you know like like, yeah you have to say okay i'm going to you know i'm going to be completely honest with myself and and honest with the other person and not hold on to the outcomes and if it works it's great and if it doesn't it doesn't and in the meantime i because a lot of it has to do with i spent a (laughs) there's a reason i drank a lot and it was to cover up 
bad behaviors, meaning not so much about just my own sense of integrity mm. or lack thereof. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm lying to you, I'm lying to myself. Yeah. And that was really the truth. And then I have to, you know, then I have to, I have to live with that inside of me, which is not easy to do. It's, it's when, especially when you don't have the tools to do it. And that's why alcohol or drugs or anything like that are, are great tools for that because yeah. they, you know, they take me right into the moment. <laughs> they take me away yeah. from whatever it was that was, that I was dreading. And so, yep, you know, I did I, the I, same I, thing I, for a little while is, is yeah. I was using it to get away from, you know, facing, that I didn't, you know, wasn't happy with myself kind of a thing, you know? So it was yeah. just easier to have a few drinks and gen- and then, oh, yeah, hey, I'm the life of the party because I'm, you know, all those mm-hmm. things yeah. wash away, like you said, you know? Yeah, it's all gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's just amazing how long I spent trying to shove, you know, the square peg into a round hole, the <laughs> proverbial round hole. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, and, there's not no amount of no amount of articles, no amount of conversations were were ever going to help me find it. I had to find it by trying it, by mm. try, trying to do something different. And I think that's the one key thing is is you know I I have some friends right now, and and they're they're in they they're in this world right now of, of being able to find people. And I go, why do you? You keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting you're going to get different. You know, like, yeah. oh, well, this time yeah. it's going to be different. It's right. Like, well, maybe you're doing it wrong. I see. <laughs> I've always wondered that too with people when they, you know, when they get out of a relationship and then they find someone else and it's like you basically just found another version of the person you were with. It's like, what is the difference? Like, what's the upgrade? If there's no upgrade, yeah. then why mm. – this didn't work out. Why are you – no – not to say that this other one couldn't, but it's like, you, you would think, um, oh my God, I can't think of the word now. <laughs> Statistically, it's not gonna, you know, it puts you behind to begin with, you mm-hmm. know, um, because if this new person starts doing something the last person did, they're in their similar anyway, you're gonna just feel deja vu, you know, sure. but it's like, why wouldn't you look for, like, try something different, you yeah. know? Because we're arrogant and we all think there's a loophole just for us. Right. Because we think at some point we'll be strong enough to get that square peg in the round hole. <laughs> or if yeah, we hit or, it enough, or, it'll wear down. <laughs> yeah, or I've earned some sort of divine intervention this time or something yeah. like that. I mean, the, literally, that's this, you know, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, I mean, that's why I think this is such a great conversation. And, and you know, especially for, for me today where I'm at, where I go, yeah, all right, I did all... All of that. I can relate to all of it. Mm-hmm. And when I finally stopped doing that is where I ended up today. And this and it's it's great to be able to say, well, this is how I ended up today. And I can tell you exactly how it was different than every other time in my life. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting, mm-hmm. you know, you guys talked about the rest of you know, that the whole, you know, to the rest of my life kind of thing. And I and that you know, I know in my relationship, I had no problem saying it because mm. you know, it I don't, I don't, if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to feel like, like a failure. Right. Right. You know, I'm not saying the words out of any sort of, I'm not being disingenuous. I'm genuinely saying these oh, yeah. things, but I'm also not, you know, and, and it was difficult for Sharon because a lot of it, there is, for her, there is a, a lifetime of, or not a lifetime, but there's a long time for her of like fear built up around these vows. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and what they mean and fear around them and things. And, and I, re- I kind of equate it back to this idea of, you know, when you, you, you screw something up and you got to make an amends and apologize and, and you don't want to sit there and say, I promise it'll never happen again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I can't promise that. Yeah, exactly. It could happen again, mm-hmm. right. but, but I need to say it. I yeah. need to say like right now, this will not happen again. Well, how can I say that? Well, I can get, I can tell you today it won't happen again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And like you were talking about, Jen, you wake up every morning, you make that commitment. Yeah. And it's that, and, and that's all, that's what it really comes down to. I can't commit to a lifetime of anything, mm-hmm. but you know, I'll tell you what I can do. I'm willing to wake up every morning and go, okay, let's, I'm going to make that commitment today. Yeah. I, yeah. What I was meaning by it more so is um, how people put um, 
so much emphasis on that they have to hit that goal of, you know, like yeah. any, like you were right. saying, anything short of that is failure. And that's not it's true. Failure, yeah. It's totally not yeah. true. And I think that yeah. that thinking needs to shift because, you know, people are in long relationships and they end and people are always, oh, you're throwing all that away. It's like, no, you're not. It's just from this point forward, we don't feel this is going to work. You know, mm-hmm. the last how many ever years, it worked fine. But here and now, it doesn't work anymore. You know, that's not throwing away those years. That's, hey, you know, you had 20 happy years or 15 happy years or whatever it was. You know, that's that's not throwing anything away. You can yeah, you still, still look back. Those years. Yeah, you can still look back on those memories or some people have kids from that scenario, you know, situation. And like there's all this other stuff. I just think there's too much pressure put on that, that end part. And I know, I think as we go, it's, 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 <laughs> for lack of a better term, it's being bred out of us because yeah. younger people aren't putting as much emphasis on it as older people, you know, and, and like even our generation and stuff, I think we're kind of, you know, we're in that transitional spot where a lot of us still feel that way, but there's a lot of us who are also like, eh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what's, what, what it's, it's a term that I've heard often in recovery. And I think it applies to situations like this too, which is one of the, one of the worst things that we could do is, is demand rigidity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, and that, that ends up being a real liability in any, Anything in any aspect is this overwhelming rigidity and that if we can turn it around to where we focus on on flexibility along with service to others and, you know, love and respect for those around us, even if we don't like somebody, we can still remain flexible. We can can still Mm -hmm. love them. I don't have to go have lunch with you to say that. I love you as a human being. Right. You know, and if we can take those little aspects, I think we have a better chance of, you know, of making, of making things work. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so much fear wrapped up in that rigidity. Exactly. Absolutes. Yep. I was just going to say, it's one of those things that I know we found as we have let go of that rigidity or being right, controlling, however you want to look at those things. Yep. Is that you find that the more flexible you are, the more likely you are for successful outcomes because you're willing to compromise. You're willing to have an open mind. You're willing to not go, it's my way or the highway, you know, and mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's time and a place for some of those things, you know, again, pick your hill, you know, Yeah. but, <clears throat> but I think it's really important that, you know, letting go of all that stuff makes you realize sometimes that like the stuff you refuse to let go of, like meaning the stuff that's, that means the most to you. It's like, that's the stuff we're fighting for. That's where if you're going to be a little more rigid, that's where it, you know, again, you know, choose your hill. Like I'm going to yeah. draw a line in the sand on this topic and I won't budge, you know, that, that happens. Yeah. But a lot of this other stuff that people end up being so rigid about, you know, like I said, you know, I, how many people, as you said, you know, they get pressured for, oh, when are you guys getting married? Or when are you having kids? Or when are you, the, you know, and it's like, maybe that's not our goal, you know, and yeah. other people just, yes. go, what? You know, it's like, well, if we do, cool. If we don't, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, you know, it's like you just said something that's so offensive to yeah, some exactly. people, you know, and it's like, you know. I love offending those people, though. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I don't know. Uh, well, what do you think, guys? We I was good? about to say, great conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm liking it. All right, folks, well, you know what to do. You want to continue the conversation with us? You can reach us at the Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook.com for emails. The Crazy Life Podcast.weebly.com. That's our website. Uh, you can also shoot us messages through that website. Uh, you, you can reach me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. Or my alternative account, which is uh, Dits with D Tits. I'm on both of them quite frequently. So feel free to reach out to me on either one. And you can also want to hear more from me. You can uh, listen to Shake the Sheets, um, which is another podcast I do with Nate McGonigal. Uh, ShakeTheSheets.com is the website. You can uh, download right direct from our website. And for you, Hanno, how can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Hanno. Find me on Facebook, Hanno Heiter. 
And you can also check out my podcast, Gotham Lights or Orville Lights, depending on what television show we're watching. (laughs) (laughs) We will be having a new episode of Gotham Lights coming out probably in another week, all about the different voices of animated Batman. Nice. Come check it out if you're a Batman fan. Man, I'm hurt that you didn't have me on that one. So hurt. <laughs> I still haven't still haven't recorded it. Oh, yet. you haven't? Well, we may need to no, talk. No, you want right. you want to jump in on it? I do. Yeah, let's do it. It's, I'm very passionate about animated Batman. Um, let's see. Uh, you can also find this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can find us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Crazy Life Podcast. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. You can find my other show, uh, at salty underscore language or at saltylanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. So, you know, maybe don't let the children's listen. Um, where was I? I forgot. Oh, we're part of the Tangibound Network, which can be found at tangiboundnetwork.com. So please go check that out and see if there's any other shows you might enjoy over there. Um, yeah, I think that's all the links. All right, sweet. Um, and then, you know, as usual, uh, reach out to somebody, you know, tell them you love them, tell them you care, just check on on them. Uh, make sure you check in on your friends that just tell you they're fine all the time too. Um, cause you know, firsthand experience, I used to tell everybody I was fine too. And I wasn't. <laughs> Spoiler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Um and then, you know, as as I've been saying lately, you know, just be kind to somebody else, you know, if you if you can do something nice for somebody, um, or you know, and definitely be be kinder to yourself. Absolutely. Don't say things to yourself that you wouldn't say to another human being. Just don't. It's not worth it. So Mm -hmm. with that, love yourself, love your neighbor, be kind, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll catch you next week.